there we go okay first thing is is we've done a little elevation for a, a building we're designing let's say for college and we have a presentation this afternoon and we were instructed to put in some people and maybe some vegetation in front of the building to give a sense of scale or context so if we're not that if we're new to photoshop how do we do something like that a uh, multitude of ways of doing it but we'll just stick to because architects always need to have things done real real fast and pretty easy because they're never going to become experts in photoshop how do we do it quickly well i suggest that the easiest way to go about it is to go to the internet and find some figures we can use there so best way to start that is to do is to type in uh, people for Photoshop, Photoshop, yeah, and zoom in and just look at the images and you'll see uh, there's a wide variety of images available to me. Um, I can choose ones that, you know, look, I was going to say photorealistic, but are actually taken from photographs or else silhouette style ones. Uh, the choice is yours. The one thing, of course, is if you're doing an elevation, an image like this isn't really going to be very much help to you or one like this where people are clearly standing not in the, on the exact same uh, plane uh, uh, relative to the picture. You're going to end up with a perspective view, so it's not going to help. Uh, better to choose somebody like, let me see if I can find a good example. I mean, that's pretty much, uh, if you can handle have somebody having somebody in your image with their back turned to you, that's quite elevation on you'll get away with it. Maybe the, maybe not. Anyway, what you don't want is you don't want somebody like this. This isn't going to help you a great deal. Now, as it happens, there is somebody I would like to have uh, standing outside my building, and that is Muhammad Ali. And I really am quite taken with the image of Muhammad Ali uh, posing as Saint Sebastian, as he did for Esquire magazine back in the 60s. I always thought that was pretty uh, amazing. Uh, image so I'm just going to go to the image here and copy it and I'm going to go control V and then it comes it shows up as a layer in my document and I'm going to call it Ali so it's renamed now clearly I want to get rid of the background uh, this is the thing uh, to cut to copy and paste something into your image is easy enough to have an image that you can really work with uh, sometimes you can spend a lot of time doing that. Now, the way we would typically go about doing it is to choose uh, one of the lasso tools, the polygonal lasso tool, and sort of cut around like with a little virtual scissors around the around the figure of Muhammad Ali. And that's going to take you forever. So you want a fast way of doing it. Several op options are available. The one that I prefer the most is to choose select and go to subject. Uh, this is where Photoshop will actually determine the subject of the photograph for you. I find that it's very reliable, even in situations like this, where Ali is wearing white gear, uh, but he's against a white background. I kind of deliberately chose this image to show what um, this tool can do. Uh, it's pretty good at discerning between uh, what is background and what is intended to be subject. Now, at the same time, I do see that it hasn't done a perfect job. So I'll just correct that a little bit before we go any further. So I'm just going to go down to the the uh, select one of the selection tools here, the magic wand tool, and I'm going to by selecting, uh, the, pressing this button up here, the add to or the, the uh, add add to selection tool. With that uh, active, I'm going to add uh, the bit that I didn't want to add, which it's still kind of being a little bit resistant to. Don't know why. Anyway, I more or less have it. And I'm going to subtract, subtract this area here between his boots, which it didn't do the first time. And tidy that up a bit. Is that okay? That's about, that'll do for the time being. Now, between Photoshop working automatically and me uh, helping a little bit, I've managed to select Muhammad Ali. Now, if I were to press delete now, I'd delete Ali and I'd be left with the, I'd be left with the, uh, the background. But of course, what I want is the opposite. So I'm just going to right click within the image and I'm going to press um, select inverse and then delete. And now I've got Ali on his own, no background, but uh, too tall. Now, in order for me to do to perform any more operations, I want to get rid of the little moving, the little moving ants, which suggest that uh, uh, the selection tool is still active. So I press control D. And now I'm just back to the layer. So I'm going to hit, make sure, making sure that I have the correct layer, the Ali layer selected. I'll go to the move tool 
and I'm just going to drag the handle down pressing shift so that it is scaled down proportionately to get it down to uh, a more accurate size with relation to my house. I'm going to zoom in on them now. Now obviously if I were doing this uh, I'm just going to lock the background layer so it doesn't move by accident because that sometimes happens. Obviously if this were a final presentation for you know, a fifth year presentation or something, um, I would be way more, I'd be way more selective about the images. I Well, I wouldn't have an image of somebody posing as St. Sebastian, but quite apart from that, I'd be um, much more concerned about making sure that I get him to be the precise height. Right now, I'm just eyeballing it. So if my presumption is, is that this glass panel is 2.2, 2 meters too high, um, which I think it is. And I'm just going to presume that Ali himself was maybe 1.8 and that's close enough for me for now just to demonstrate what we're doing I'm going to move them into position now the other thing that I would have done if I were selecting an image uh, for a final presentation I would have made sure that it's a much more uh, elevational type of image you can see here that Ali's feet are uh, in perspective mode and uh, that's a bit unfortunate so I'll just have to get rid of them and I'll do that choosing the rectangular the rectangle selection box and I'm just going to uh, draw a rectangle over his uh, feet and delete them and I'm sorry Mohammed I meant no disrespect you just had they just had to go okay so I have them in place and I zoom out and it looks kind of you know proportionately correct but it's not a very convincing depiction of a human or a character outside my building for all sorts of reasons um you know that it's not properly color matched it looks like it's lit a different way and so on um, I'd be much fussier uh, if I were doing this for a presentation one way though to make it look like it's a more plausible representation of a human is to give him a shadow and to cast that shadow against the wall behind which will automatically put him into the picture if you like so the easiest way to do that is just to make a copy of the uh, Ali layer so I'm going to go to duplicate layer and it already it automatically makes Ali copy. Now I'd actually call it Ali, Ali Shadow and I'm going to do that because I like to, no matter how small the project, I much prefer to just uh, name every layer because by the time you get to maybe six, seven layers in a small project, it can suddenly become quite confusing and you might discover that you've made a change to a layer without realizing it and then 20 minutes later you're thinking like why does it look so weird and you can't actually trace your steps so I find it just so much easier to avoid all of that by just uh, naming the layers so choosing Ali shadow I'm going to go to the move tool and I'm just going to move it down to the right and down the page a little bit roughly where a shadow might fall on the wall now obviously he's in his shadow now is in front of himself so I'm gonna to have to change that and I do that by, and this is the beauty of working in Photoshop, everything is layered. And the layers that are closest to you are the ones that you see most of. So I'm, I can see most of his shadow, but I want to see most of him. So I'm going to put his shadow layer behind his body. Just watch the screen and you can see uh, we've swapped them around. Now the fastest way to make something like this image look like a shadow is to change the levels that's what will when i say shadow to get a silhouette effect on an image go to adjustment choose levels crush it all the way down to black and we have an immediate shadow there's loads of other ways of doing it that's the way i do it i just find it fast now his uh his uh, shins are casting and the what's left of his feet are casting a shadow somewhere where they couldn't possibly cast a shadow so i have to get rid of that and I do that by selecting Ali Shadow and choosing the rectangular selection box, dragging it over the offending article, choosing delete, it's gone. Control Shift to get rid of the moving ants. Okay, so I have the body and the shadow in place, but the shadow is too strident. So I'm going to bring the shadow opacity level down. I'll bring it down to about 40%. That'll do me for the time being. Okay, it looks a little bit more realistic now, insofar as why would Ali be standing outside my house posing as St. Sebastian, but you know what I mean. Okay, I'm going to give him a bit of company. I'll bring in another figure, just for whatever reason. And uh, I'll come back in a couple of minutes and we look at how we're going to put a tree into this image.
Okay, we're back. Bowie and Ali are standing outside my house, which uh, that's one of the great things about Photoshop. Okay, now I want them to be in the shadow of a tree. So I'm going to bring a tree in here and put it to the front of the house. Now, the thing about trees is, is that uh, obviously with humans, the form is relatively simple. So it's quite easy to find an image of a human and then select the part that you want, cut out the background and then place the human into your picture. A tree can be a lot trickier. If you look at some of the trees here in the background of my image, you'll see that I can see you know, between the gaps in the leaves and the branches, I can see the sky behind. Now, if I were to bring this image in and I were to try and cut around all of these leaves or use one of those types of techniques, uh, selection technique to try and show the sky as it pops through the tree, it would take me all day. So what I do instead is I use a technique for, for getting the trees to work. And that technique is, is to use not a JPEG, but to bring in the tree as a PNG file, PNG file. Now, how I get a PNG file is I'll go on the internet and I will type in tree PNG and a bunch of images will come up and I will know that I'm looking at the right thing because the images will have these gray and white checkerboard backgrounds. Now, when you see a gray and white checkerboard background like this, it means that you're working with the PNG file. It doesn't mean that the uh, when you download the PNG file that it will have a tree against uh, a checkerboard background like this. What it means is that checkerboard signifies that there is actually no background. There's no digital uh, visual information where the background would normally be. And that's what PNG um, files do is they suppress information. Uh, visual information in certain channels so that instead of getting a full complete canvas of an image you can uh, be very selective and just get the image of what it is you're looking for so in this instance i'm looking for a tree obviously and i don't want to have a background in the gap areas between the leaves i want to have it completely clear now where i just simply so i look at it and i say oh great i've got a png file this is exactly what the guy told me to do uh, were I to just simply copy this image uh, like this and bring it into my drawing and press Control V, in it comes, I get the tree and it most definitely does have a background. It has the black and white, uh, uh, the black and gray checkerboard going with it. That's because I copied the icon and not the file. It's not the image itself. So what I want to do is, is I want to go to the site where this file is actually located and download the original PNG, I don't want the image representing it. So in that case, what I would do is I would go to, there's a bunch of different um, sites you can go to. Uh, Tree PNG is one of them, I think. I'll just, uh, um, I'm not sure actually, but there are a bunch of sites you can go to and they typically have some form of uh, subscription. Some of it is free, some paid, just be careful which one you go with. This one obviously is a paid one. So if I were to subscribe and then hit download, I'd actually download the PNG file, which has nothing in the background and not the not the, the icon of the PNG file, which does have a gray and white background. I hope that's clear. Now, what happened was, was I actually, I already have an account at one of these uh, services. So I downloaded a tree earlier on today and I'm going to use that tree just drag it into my image and show you how to manipulate it so here's the tree here and as you can see i can see through the leaves to the background i can see through and i can see the sky behind and i can see the window back down here and the building and so on so that's as i want it it's a little bit too big and in truth it's uh, it's not a great color match for this image but it will demonstrate the point so first thing I'll do is I'll make it smaller. Sorry, just accept its position. And, oh, why is it doing that? I'll just accept its position. And I'm just going to, first of all, rename it and call it tree. Then I'm going to rasterize the layer because PNGs typically don't come in rasterized. Sometimes you're going to have to do it in order to be able to manipulate it. So I'm going to shrink it down and bring it up onto my where, oops, where I want it to be. Could I do it making it a tiny bit smaller? I suppose I could. So maybe a tiny bit larger now. 
I don't know, something like that. Carrie, be more careful how you move around your image. Now, okay, so now I'm going to make uh, a shadow so that the lads are standing in the, the boys are standing in the shadow of the tree. So to do that, I'll use the same technique I used before. So I'll choose tree, duplicate layer, and choose the uh, copy and bring it down. I'm going to call it tree shadow I'm going to bring it below the tree itself so that it sits in the background I'm going to go up to images choose adjustments and levels crush the level all the way down oh I've chosen the wrong one control Z make sure I've got the tree shadow image adjustment levels Okay, bring the tree, be, the shadow behind the tree itself, which I thought I'd done, but obviously not. And I'm going to bring the the uh, opacity down to about 40%, so it looks like a shadow. And I'm going to clip the part of the trunk, which I don't want. Uh, so selecting tree shadow, come down here and get rid of it. And that's... That'll do me. Now, um, there's one other thing you might want to do here is I'm just going to switch the tree layer off. As you can see, my uh, shadow is, is being cast into areas where no shadow would fall, like in the sky here and over here too. Anywhere else? No, I don't think so. So I'm just going to get rid of those. Um, in a simple image like this, you wouldn't even notice. But uh, if you were doing a compl more, you know, a more complex um, uh, composition, you delete uh, tree image delete it's gone control D in a more complex image yeah you might notice it and you might um, you know you might spend a bit of time trying to find out what the hell is that crazy shadow doing you know falling where it shouldn't be falling so I think it's probably better as well to correct as you go along so I'll put the tree back in and um, I've got a tree and two cool people standing outside my house. If I were doing this for real, for real presentation, I'd spend a bit more time adjusting the images and the tree I've just brought in so that they color match a little bit better, maybe blend or contrast with the house a little bit better and maybe pop out a little bit better. But you've got the principle. I'll just show you one little trick if you do have, if you're out of time and you really have to, uh, you know, you know that your images aren't looking great as they're located, you know, as they're standing with your building behind them. There is one little thing that we can do, and that is to uh, create a new layer, first of all. I'll switch off everything. And I'll create a new layer. It's called Layer 1. I won't rename it this time, just bring it to the bottom. I'm going to paint it white. And I'm going to bring up my background layer. I'm going to bring the background layer just down a touch. Whoops. Background layer, turn off the lock, bring it down, touch so that it's not quite so st strong an image. And then when I bring all the other layers back on, they pop out a little bit more. Now, that's one way of doing it. It's not ideal, but uh, if you're in a rush, that might help. Then you save the whole thing as a JPEG um, so that it's one file. And then you can include it in InDesign or whatever it is that you're going to use to make up your final sheet. And away you go. So bringing trees and people into Photoshop, that's the fastest way that I know how to do it.